And also with you. It's great to be with you once again. It's great to be with you once again. It's great to be with you once again. We only speak to each other once a week. <laughs> yeah, we send each other little texts saying, I'll see you on the sofa in order to record the service. And uh, no, that doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> but here we are once again. Um, Oh, we're still in this strange COVID affected time and it looks like tomorrow on Monday there may be an announcement about further changes afoot in terms of how we order our lives. I don't know exactly what that's going to mean for how we order our worship in life, but we continue to do the best. We continue to remember that God is great, don't we? Yeah, keep going. Hang yeah. on in there. How's your week been, Ali? Good. That sounds like a trick question. <laughs> I, don't... I just thought you might like to say something about how your week Well, been. it's been really good. And uh, yesterday was World Mental Health Day. Yeah. That is what it's called, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, World Mental Health Day. Had yeah. a little of October, um, mind year. block there. And I did a talk for a global mental health summit about dealing with mental health crisis in your church. Did I just hear something drop on the floor? Sorry, I just... It was a global <laughs> mental health summit. Wow. Uh, we are making talking about mental health. You know it's my thing, but we are making we're going great guns at St Paul's with our Centre for Wellbeing and uh, the work that we've done, the work we have planned. So do please keep praying for us with that. And if you are not feeling great today, God be with you more than ever. Um, do something nice. For yourself because these days are hard and so be really really kind to yourself and look out for each other as I know you are doing. Great so uh, we're going to be continuing um, with our little walk through Matthew's Gospel I think that's where we've been uh, the, for yeah. a little while at the minute so uh, we're continuing on through there well we will be you can go get your Bible ready now we will be reading from Matthew chapter 22 starting at verse 1 a little later in the service so uh, during our first two worship songs, you could go and get your Bible. Uh, or a cup of tea, or both. Or a cup of tea, or both. Um, or coffee. Other hot drinks are available. <laughs> um, uh, other temperature drinks are available <laughs> as well. But we are going to worship God. We're going to start by singing Just As I Am, and we're going to move straight into a dance along song called, I don't remember what it's called, it's called Every Move. So uh, if you have not warmed up, then this little worship session is going to get you warmed up and ready to praise God. So let's praise him together.
Together we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loves the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for this 18th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, today we're going to be thinking a little bit more about uh, being included, about who's in and who's out, about the invitation that is extended to us. Um, and uh, it seems really poignant that we're thinking about this on World Mental Health Day, because Ali, as Ali was saying, um, something that uh, is happening at St Paul's, it's also happening in the parish of Coventry All Saints, is that we try to extend our welcome and inclusion, particularly to people uh, who have experience of mental ill health um, just because of our background really so we can't help that happening uh, that's just how we operate but we try and do it deliberately as well it's not just purely accidental um, and something about actually how people are included and how they respond to that invitation what our expectations might be upon people we'll be thinking all about uh, about that a little later after we have had the reading which is going to come to us in a animated form right now. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, Tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared dinner. My oxen and my fat cows have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they ignored them again and ran away. While the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready. But those invited were not worth it. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. So he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here? without a wedding robe. And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. A typically action-packed parable from Jesus, as he talks about the kingdom of God, which he talks about a lot, 
uh, his favourite thing, one of his favourite things. Let's not say his favourite thing. His favourite thing's probably God, justice, mercy, turning water into wine, that kind of thing. But he's talking about um, trying to explain what he means when he talks about the kingdom of God. And this time he's talking about a wedding banquet. And so there's a king. He's preparing this banquet and... Um, he says to his servants, tell the people who've been invited to come, but they won't come. Not really sure why. And then he sends some more servants and uh, says, uh, everything's ready. It sounds amazing. Um, come along. But again, they didn't go. And some of them actually did terrible things to his servants. And so the king is really cross and uh, sends some vengeance upon them. But then he decides, well, look, we've still got the food. We've still killed the fatted calf. And so therefore we still need people to come and join in with the wedding banquet. And so the uh, servants who are left <laughs> after what happened before, they go out into the streets and literally gather people. And it says the bad as well as the good. And the hall is filled up with guests. Remember those days? Halls being filled with guests. Oh. It's a distant memory. Yeah, we can't do that now. So no. this wouldn't work now in our context, oh, but... I wonder what will happen in heaven. Will we have to wear a mask and sit separately? I don't think there's COVID in heaven. Oh, awesome. Discuss. No, okay, I'm, I'm um, done with that. Yeah, so there they are, and imagine the hall, and it's filled with guests alike in the good old days. But then the king, who seems like a man who is, it's hard to satisfy, he comes in. And he's and uh, there's a man in there who's not wearing the, the right clothes. So we're told he's not wearing wedding clothes. And um, the king chucks him out. And um, he's not happy. And then the last line of our reading, many are invited, but few are chosen. So there's a whole long rigmarole, if you will, where lots of different people are invited to this banquet, which probably was amazing and lots of them don't come and then loads of random people come but one of them doesn't look right many are invited but few are chosen now i don't think that jesus is exhorting us to always wear the right clothes i don't think he's bothered what clothes we wear to particular occasions i think what he's bothered about is that when we are chosen when he calls our name, when he names us, when uh, he reminds us that our names are written on the palm of his hand, mm -hmm. when he reminds us um, those beautiful words in Psalm 139, I knit you together in your mother's womb. When he reminds us of those promises and of his call and claim on our lives, he expects us to respond. And that response changes us. His speaking um, our names over us transforms our lives. And I think in these particular days that we're living through, feeling and believing and trusting in and stepping into, that work of transformation is really, really hard. But it doesn't stop it being true. That as Jesus speaks that call over us, as he invites us, offers that open-armed invitation, into his kingdom, then everything changes for us from that moment on. So I wonder today how much you are feeling that transformation. Do you feel like you've heard his call and yet you're struggling to take the next step? Do you feel like you were in a sort of work of transformation, you understood that Jesus was starting to change your heart and maybe your life and the things that you prioritise, but it's kind of hit a brick wall. Do you feel like the energy to step into that call and into that promise to trust that his arms are wide open for you? Do you feel like that energy and motivation to engage with him has gone? I feel like today there are lots of you who are feeling that. And um, this may be the season for feeling that. And if you are struggling to understand how the call of Jesus can make any difference to your life, then that's okay for now. Don't let it 
define what happens from this moment forwards. Because it's always possible to uh, read again that invitation to the wedding banquet. God is continuously and constantly killing fatted calves for us, metaphorically speaking. He cannot wait for us to uh, show up and engage with what he has for us, with the future days that he promises us lived in his good purposes. And so if you are feeling um, broken, battered, bruised, down on your luck, like you cannot see how things are going to get better or change, then that's okay. We are living through difficult days. But know this, that this morning is a perfect opportunity to write back to Jesus and say, I accept your invitation. It's a perfect opportunity to open your heart and your life, lives afresh to him again today. Because he isn't for those who think they've got it sewn up. He isn't for those who look like the successful ones. He isn't for those who look like nothing could ever possibly knock them off course in life. He's for those who are feeling just like you are. Broken and battered and down on your luck. And like God couldn't possibly want to have anything to do with you. So today, open your hearts and minds and lives to the possibility that he's calling you. Hear his voice and know that he chooses you uniquely, lovingly made. But he knows you better than you know yourself and step through the doors into that packed hall and see what he has for you in the days to come, days full of hope and peace and joy. Amen. Amen. And in order to reflect on this word that Ali has brought to us today, we're going to listen together to O Come to the Altar. <laughs>
So let's pray. During these prayers, there is a response. I will say, as you have called us, and the response is, Lord, we come. As you have called us, Lord, Lord we, we come. come. Invited by our God, we have gathered here. Let us now voice our prayers for the church and for the world. Father, when either the traditional or the progressive blinds us to the truth of your will, clear our vision and speak through our prejudices until we are once again open to your changing. May we be, before anything else, your people, sharing your concerns and desires. As you have called us, Lord, Lord we, come. we come. Father, we recognise how powerful the influences are in our world, which distract many and lead away from your truth. We pray for the quiet whisper of your wisdom to be noticed and acknowledged in many lives. We pray for widespread, widespread discipline of the heart, a new openness to generosity of spirit. As you have called us, Lord, Lord we, we come. come. Father, may our homes and daily schedules be part of the territory of your kingdom, where it is your will which guides and your love which rules. As you have called us, Lord, Lord we, we come. come. Father, our hearts rail against the cruelty and unfairness of suffering and disease, and we kneel now alongside all in pain and weep with them, crying out to you for comfort and the healing of your love. For you are no bringer of evil to our lives, but share our sorrow and give us the grace to bear it. As you have called us, Lord, Lord we come. We Father, as death takes from us those we love, and we find it hard to live without them, take from us all bitterness of heart and let us share with them the peace you give over which death has no power at all. As you have called us, Lord, Lord we, come. we come. Father, it is such an honour to be invited to your banquet. Make us worthy of our calling. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We join our prayers with those of the whole church praying in our own language or in the version most natural and comfortable to us. Out loud we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we are coming into land now with this service. Um, got some news to share. Um, Ali, do you want to go first? Uh, the life of St Paul's continues. It does. And one of the great celebrations, markers in our year, is our annual meeting Three. where we encourage one another with stories of the life of the church over the past 12 months. It's our meeting for last year, 2019. Now, we're holding this meeting remotely due to coronavirus restrictions. If you would like to come along, you need to contact me for the link to the meeting. So you, when you say remotely, you need either a computer or a phone or a telephone. Or a telephone. So you yeah. can. It doesn't have to be an Internet connected phone. No, no, it can just be a just normal phone it. with a phone number. Yeah. But for safeguarding reasons, we are not able to publicise the link. So you have to ask you for the link. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. And when is the meeting? Oh, <laughs> well spotted i'm good at this. uh monday the 19th of october at 7 p.m monday the 19th so late because we are having an annual meeting as well in the parish of all saints as is on sunday the 18th of october as is going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning and we are going to meet in person 
at St Margaret's Church in order to have our meeting. Again, it's a time of encouragement and of sharing and also of electing the leadership of the church for the next year. Um, I'm not entirely sure how long these elections are going to last because we're all out of kilter with the dates being um, a bit unusual. Normally this meeting uh, used to have to have been had by the end of April and then it had been extended to the end of May and then it's been extended, extended to the end of October. But we're still, our report is for 2019. So the first 10 months of what's happened this year shouldn't really get that much of a mention, although no, no doubt they will get something of a mention. Anyway. That's what we're doing because we can move the furniture and create lots of space. It feels like um, it will be safe for us to have that meeting at 10 o'clock on Sunday the 18th. If you would like to uh, stand to be part of the leadership team or something, then please do contact me. If you have opinions about things, about the way things are going, let me know and I can make sure that your voice is heard in some way during the service uh, and the meeting. Now we do have a birthday to celebrate. It is Andy Henry's birthday, so happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Um, and I guess we should sing. Andy. <gasps> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andy. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Indeed, indeed. So we are now going to sing our final song, King of Kings, Majesty. <laughs> God of heaven living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne.
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rain down upon you and be with you this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a great week. See you soon. See you soon. Bye.